All right, let's talk about lighting in this lesson. Most important thing in architectural images and this one issue most people seem to be unable to solve and they think it's something technical and steal V-Ray or they download HDRIs like crazy but it, it doesn't really help to bring atmosphere in your images and it, it doesn't really give you controllable light setups right away it's still a matter matter we have to care about by ourselves so for this exercise it's really crucial you have default object color 80% gray because you cannot see light on, on a blue surface uh, not that good at least and first of all we need a room um, Let's make it quite big with uh, five, excuse me, five by eight meters. Uh, so we have something to show, and um, let's extrude it by I don't know 240 maybe with caps on, and make the normals point inward, what's and. Uh, we need a window. Um, can we have one twenty by eighty, or maybe let's eighty by one twenty? And just put it close to the corner and give it some without caps, some depth, and let's go inside the window and just make some frame in it. If you have problems with creating stuff like that, um, please watch my other tutorials. I think I explained my head off in how to do it. And we need a camera. We should create that camera in 3D perspective and then switch to top so we can actually modify the camera. First of all it should be straight on, otherwise it might look like a snapshot. And we should actually dive inside the camera clicking on this little icon here. And I don't really want to show the window, that's not the topic. The topic is more how the light is distributing across the surfaces. And I will not show you like any helpers like using physical sky, which is, in my opinion, more for outside, um, outside or how to say exteriors. But I will really focus on the standard lights because that way you have much more control and you really know what's going on and you really know how to change things. Most important thing at first is that you. When you hit render, there is a light um, by default and this light gets deleted as soon as you create your own light source. So we don't need to um, disable that. If we wanted to, we could do so under the render settings. There's options, so it says disable default light. But um, what I think is more important is that if you render it again using command R on Mac, then the windows out here are black. And this is really like kind of frauding your eye. It's, it's really um, like bad for your reception for you. You should um, just take a standard sky and it should be all white. So that way you really have a feeling for uh, what's going on or what's supposed to be going on. The, our idea is to have light coming across um, or inside our room. So maybe I make the window a little a little bigger I'm grabbing the polygons, not like this but um, with in point mode. Maybe here it's simpler with all points selectable. 
so I have much light coming inside. All right, back to model, model mode. And the one thing you should start with is always the most, um, the strongest light source, like the most important light source. And for, for some, we take the infinite light. You can use the sunlight too, which is basically an infinite light with a sun tag, but the infinite light is more pure. You can just define anything by yourself, which is good for learning, in my opinion. And for the sun, we should name it right away. Um, for the sunlight, it's, it's coming in parallel rays. So that way uh, the position doesn't matter. So if I lift it up or if I turn it around, well, the turning is quite important, but if I just move the light source itself, it won't have any effect. But I should, of course, um, invest quite some time in finding the right angle. So many people have really problems. I just leave the camera now or I can even lock it, right click and go to protection and now leave it. And many people have struggle um, like um, placing the sunlight and they don't know how to move it and then they start touching it here and so. But the most of the easiest thing is if lights are enabled in your view um, to look from top down and find the right angle to get inside your window. My window is a little small, so I just grab more points, move it, make it bigger. And that way I can be sure that this ray is coming inside my window. And then I look from this perspective. And all I should do is kind of move um, the ray down, so I just grab the red thing here and move it downwards. So now I should go back to perspective, get inside the camera and really should have a look what kind of effect this has. And This is the rendering already, so you don't really see the light coming through because shadows are disabled, so let's use ray traced shadows. And that way, um, that's the, like the most important thing that really has something to do with the composition of your final image is having a really interesting shape for those shadow edges. They should really flow around stuff like up your walls, along the floor. They shouldn't like get close to any other corners in, in the geometry of your room. They shouldn't be like just slightly within your frame. They really should have a, this is a compositional element so you can like play around with this forever like moving it like there that's a whole different imp impression then or you could make it excuse me flatter like so it's it's really really flat from the angle wise and once you're happy with that um, then you um, can go on but I found it good the way it was right at the beginning. Well, not, not excellent, but um, interesting. And like one more advice, if um, if you have stuff going on here, like furniture, then you really should make sure if you have like, I don't know, um, a cube or something, then you really should Take care that whatever furniture there is, like the sun should um, have a, like an interesting way of pronouncing the shape of the geometry. These edges can help to give your image depth and actually um, tell the viewer a lot about um, the shape of, of the stuff in your room. So if something can bend, use this. If there is some information like there's a kink, then it says there's something in front of something else. You really should stress that with your lighting. Okay, Rain, name the sun right away. Every light source should have a distinct name. 
and um, you can also go to basic and activate icon color so if you change the color of your light source then you can see it right here so whenever you have the feeling that um, well there's too much warmth in there you know right away which light sources could be responsible for that next is um, this little icon here this little arrow gives you access to use temperature and while 6500 is neutral you can move it to the left so when you reduce it you get really warm colors if you move it to the right you get cold colors then this is kind of the spectrum of natural light so let's just stick with that but for safety I go to HSV so I can see my light is around about here and 36, 37 is a good value in, in terms of um, hue so um, I made quite good experience with uh, I found this quite good and with uh, saturation yeah we, we can still play with that all right, um, that's the sunlight, and as long as you're working, um, you should keep the shadow ray traced hard, and when you go final, you should switch it to area. But there is more you can define about that area. Among details, you can set the infinite angle either really, really low, then you get very sharp edges only here there's some blurriness or if you have bad weather or if you're like um, striving for a certain atmosphere then you can make like five or something like that and this looks really washed out but this can be cool I can show you um, just in a second but now let's use this as the standard sun and I find it quite often this the sun uh, by itself can be, well it's very important, but it can be a bit boring, so um, what you can do is um, you can A, intensify it, but you should always think about that there are more light sources coming to your scene and then this might be way too bright, so I just leave it at 100% for now, but I can, ac can accompany the the sunlight with another sunlight. I just copy it and I use it um, like um, I don't know like it's it's like a bit of not a halo but like an I don't know if that word exists aura like it's it's the thing around the sun and if I put this to a higher value then I have two kind of sunlights over each other so this is my con my concrete light if you want and this is like the kind of filtered light like across my window frame it's kind of bouncing off and it's more washed out and you could even like play here and make it more saturated so because if you look at reality you it's not like um, a computer simulation there's like different colors going on all over your walls just have a look around you look at the white wall and you will see there is like more white shades uh, more yellow shades red ones blue ones and you really should mix colors across the surfaces to get a vivid room so that's the aura and usually i only look at one light source at a time so if i'm fine with that I add the Sun to it and I still wait with cranking the value the intensity up here because there's more coming um, usually I use an area light which I can call window or daylight if you want And this gets a cold temperature and you can really turn this to a blue value because it is mixing up with the yellowish Sun anyways so 
start with a strong value and then you can still reduce it if it's too much for your liking. Turn the daylight around, viewing from top, and make sure your mouse is not here but outside this circle so you can turn it around, hold down shift to make this perfect 180 degrees turn and put it right within your window frame but behind your glass. So if there is any glass in here in your model, make sure it doesn't touch the glass. It's there for lighting your room and not for your glass, of course. So move it smaller so it doesn't touch anything. Have a look at it from another side. Position it just in here and move it so it fits. So it shouldn't touch anything. This is the window frame and it's way behind it. so. It should be okay because the area light is just um, a lot of point lights so they shouldn't be close to anywhere and you need to be careful with area lights because they have two ways of um, kind of uh, distributing their rays I just render it out and please have a look at the corners they get kind of dark and they may change a little when I change the fall off angle from 180 per, um, degrees to zero. So you can see they really reach that. Um, I'm not saying you have to disable it right away. In some cases 180 might look good, but you really should um, consider this value because if I just move it inwards, you see it makes a, a dark, kind of um, seam, so if you put it to zero degrees then it's way more natural. But in this case I can leave it to zero but then use a shadow, an area shadow. I can define it among shadow and set it to a low value because I don't want to invest too much time and um, you need a very quick response from your program to actually um, yeah to actually make decisions if, if you have to wait forever each time and you render then it's kind of bad and this noise doesn't hurt it's gonna get mixed up with other, other light sources and you may use textures anyways and so noise is not a bad thing um, uh, just like that so let's mix it up with the Sun and let's have a look here. We still have some color information. It's not pure white. Let's take the aura in there and then you see it is getting brighter. Especially if you think about... Um, we are going to use global illumination later on. And so we really should maybe leave it like this. We can still kind of crank it up in color correction or we'll see. But I want this kind of halo um, to be bigger and um, let's just try it with 7 and maybe intensify it okay now I do not like the the blue too, too much, so let's reduce it. And um, we also have some more stuff going on, like... Um, yeah, you could of course use a second daylight if you want to play. Like, um, in, in some cases you will find that... I just copy-paste it, that... A, that sometimes light is coming more from like this angle and it, it should have a slightly different color like maybe maybe it's even warm again or so um, just to have stuff going on we can try it so you can see we have more variation here might be a good thing And 
it's really crucial that you have these areas in your view, that you really check whether this is too bright, this is of course too dark, there shouldn't be pure white or pure black. So um, one thing you should consider too is when you have a sky, then it will be in your global illumination, which we'll just activate now. I use low settings, weak smoothing, detail enhancement is not there in recent Cinema 4D versions. I use low sampling again and a diffuse depth of 5 rays will perfectly do. Um, yeah, Let's leave it like that and just have a view. Uh, look, this is what the sky does. Many people just crank the sky up until they have some um, light inside the room, but this is, will be really low contrast and muddy. So, um, see it with daylights turned on. Now it's getting way too bright. Maybe one daylight will do. And you can see it's really, really bright already. So, this is the time when we need to redefine our intensities. And well, that's like the main job about lighting, it's going back and forth all the time. And it's just a very natural thing to do, like redefining all over. I can tell you there won't be a, like a finished light setup you can use over and over. I mean, you can use it, but it will be um, pretty far away from, from like a perfect result. Okay. This is maybe too washed out for some people, but we could leave it. Um, then if you really want to have the feeling of a strong sunlight coming in your room, then let's use a kind of old school effect like called bouncing. You could argue that um, for bouncing you have global illumination. But you really want to support that impression and global illumination by itself is way too uniform. So let's use a bounce light distributing or reflecting the sunlight back to this wall, for example, um, with a fall off. So it really just touches a few areas here. We can use linear because linear is by 0% at the outside of the globe. So we can use that to kind of support stuff, support like uh, sun. If this appears too mathematical for you because you don't want circles, let's try inverse again. And it really should be just like a hint. Okay, it, it shouldn't be uh, too obvious, especially not on the floor. So let's move it up. And the good thing about lighting is that no one can really judge it um, for accuracy. So in my opinion, it is way more important to have a, like um, a good feeling about it when you when you see it. It's it's not a purely mathematical thing. So this is what it looks like in conjunction. It's way too bright, of course. Here it, it looks really like a disaster, so... Let's have a look at it again. And you can tell, if you look at this wall, it looks much more interesting now, because if I disable the bounce light, this is just uniformly blue and very generic, very boring to look at and just with that slight bounce light it helps this scene a lot. So what else can you do? Mm. There is like, at least two more things. Um, for example, you can use a copy of the sunlight 
and use it for for a shine like for rays and in this case it is important that you keep the angle of these um, rays but you should move it really in front um, of the window and this time we're not using a sunlight but we're using a spotlight and it, it's, it should better be a square parallel spot so this is where it shoots rays from here to there right inside our window you can follow those rays here and again isolate the light source have a look at it what it does and it kind of spills this light in there now you may like it lighting is a lot about experimental stuff but in case this was too strong you could still switch it to no illumination so why would you create a light source and disable its illumination you might ask but um, this is very useful if you um, are just interested in volumetrics and these are these effects um, if you go to visibility you can make it go longer and if you increase the brightness brightness among visibility then you may see a little ray coming in here like this I hope you can see it in the video and um, this may be a bit um, to Disney like but um, you can use it very very um, well dosed so then it might look quite good now in conjunction with anything else and um, now you will always have the same problem with um, like those really spare or blank um, surfaces and for that I really like to use caustics that's like reflecting sunlight um, to the to the ceiling and other parts so let's just um, make this a wider angle so we can see better now what I'm talking about is um, I want some shines here so what I do is I use a spotlight this time and I place it um, more or less underneath my window so this should fake sunlight that is kind of hitting um, this ledge or maybe there's a CD-ROM lying around and it's reflecting stuff back um, this is really good for making your scene more vivid of course this should um, shouldn't be um, like this. I can show you what it does. Let's call it caustics. It's faking caustics. It's calculating really, really fast. And it should have um, a some kind of shadow enabled. So you know those effects, don't you? And um, if you really want to make this look more interesting, uh, then you s should use some noise in the illumination and um, this may be it or you may, be, uh, may want to reduce this effect and um, if you crank up the brightness you can reduce its strength and as usual you should give it some some color not quite sure which one we're gonna choose so now you can see that 
the sunlight consists of well first of all we should tell them all to have an icon color but you can see that there's not like one stupid sun there's an aura, an area around it there's a bounce to it there are rays coming through the window they are caustics on the floor, uh, on the ceiling maybe a little too strong and you could think about breaking this up into smaller bits using blockers and there is daylight in two flavors and especially the caustics may have really 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 undefined shadow edges so they're really just there you can't, don't really see them but you see that the surface is kind of mixed up really depends and I personally do not like this edge, it looks a bit like an error but um, yeah we will see and now you can still um, refine like your secondary intensity this is the rays and their reflection like how much they get um, like strengthened so your overall image will get brighter then and um, if you want it to be brighter in general you could also raise the gamma value but this will lead to a bit more washed out image and um, I would rather you can do that in some cases but I wouldn't do it now and then there is um, well, what's it like in reality there should be a bit more um, light coming at this wall so um, let's just zoom in a little and um, we can also make um, some light against this wall using a I would call it a room light using an area light which is called room and uh, let's not define the color really here but um, just first care about the effect and it should be I like the fact that it is only going in that, that direction mm. it shouldn't stick in the floor move it outside our view and um, make it really really weak because you just want to compensate for stuff if you look at it all together then you play around with this value until you're happy probably a bit brighter And if you um, think this is um, increasing the light to in general, so um, like then you can still use a spotlight right there. Um, lift it up, of course, and have a look at this option. So let's kind of make this bigger, but very, very low contrast, minus 50, let's see. So this is really undefined. And um, again, some color doesn't hurt.
and of course this wall should never be brighter than that one so let's reduce it quite a lot and I personally don't like the shininess that much so the visibility of this effect can be largely reduced in general I think this scene is a bit too bright and the corners still look a bit blank so classically you would use ambient occlusion now um, put it to a middle gray value and let's have a look in the corners um, depending on what's going on in your scene you shouldn't use too much of it because it's it's kind of making your scene look a bit muddy and especially for architectural images you, you don't want to overdo it with that kind of effect so maybe the bounce is too strong as well and you can see now I'm already starting to kind of playing around with my setup I, for example, find the main sun too weak. It should be really, really burning in there. And maybe even a bit crisper. Of course, um, you will surely have to touch that light setup again once you have textured everything and once there's stuff blocking your lights and so on. Um, but that's a good base here. It's the room light. All right. And I don't really like this little shadow in here, so I take my daylights, both of them, and just... Mm, no, we shouldn't do that. But we may want to move it inwards a little. Just to see how it behaves in this corners. And now you can judge by yourself if you want a sharp corner, pull it outside. If you like that bit of a shadow, then you can pull it inwards. Probably a bit better like that. But we shouldn't forget about the caustics, so maybe they are just too weak right now. Or maybe this was a bad idea, making it too soft. And also, yeah, I don't know, it feels a little big and too weak, so we can make this a little sharper. Yeah. All right, and if this is too gray, then again, make this a tad more stronger. And the rest should be a matter of post production, like the final touches can be done in Photoshop as well. Yep. I hope you liked this tutorial, this should help you a lot with your interior lighting.